and he's uh, meeting today with some of our representatives. Uh, Mike Pence is leaving today, as you know. We needed to take an extra day for security reasons. Uh, but Mike is leaving. Uh, Mike Pompeo will be meeting also, uh, who's here right now with us, and he's going to be joining the meeting. We have uh, a lot of great people over there. We'll see. In the meantime, uh, our soldiers are not in harm's way, as they shouldn't be, as two countries fight over land. That has nothing to do with us. And uh, the Kurds are much safer right now, but the Kurds know how to fight. And as I said, they're not angels. They're not angels. If you take a look, you have to go back and take a look. But they fought with us. Now, we paid a lot of money for them to fight with us, and that's okay. Uh, they did well when they fought with us. They didn't do so well when they didn't fight with us. Uh, when I refused to allow the Americans a year and a half ago to fight with the Kurds against Iraq, I said, wait a minute. This country, stupidly, just spent a fortune on fighting for, with, around Iraq. Nobody knows how they spent it. But they spent, actually, we're in the Middle East now for $8 trillion, if you can believe that stupidity. But in Iraq, we're in for probably five and a half trillion. So they're telling me, wait a minute, we just spent five and a half trillion fighting in Iraq and with Iraq. And now we're supposed to spend money to fight with the Kurds against Iraq. I said, no, thank you. So what happens is when I said we're not going to fight with the Kurds, the Kurds left. They didn't want to fight against Iraq, which right now isn't the greatest fighting force in the world. That happened twice. The Kurds actually are pulling back substantially from Turkey. And Syria is pulling in. Syria probably will have a partner of Russia, whoever they may have. Uh, I wish them all a lot of luck. You know, Russia was involved in Afghanistan. It used to be called the Soviet Union. Now it's called Russia for a reason, because they lost so much money in Afghanistan that uh, they had a downsize, a very big downsizing. So if Russia wants to get involved with, the, uh, with Syria, that's really up to them. They have a, a problem with Turkey. They have a problem at a border. It's not our border. We shouldn't be losing lives over it. But again, we only had 28 soldiers. It was 26, 28. I got all different numbers. It ends up being 28 between the 26, 28, two people, and they're fully accounted for. So that's the story. It's very simple. And we're watching, and we're negotiating, and we're trying to get Turkey to do the right thing, because we'd like to stop wars regardless, whether Americans are in or whether they're not in. Uh, we want to see wars stop. That's a very important thing. On a humanitarian basis, we want to see that happen. Steve? How confident are you that Mike oh. Pence will be able to arrange a ceasefire? What, why don't you go and yes. take Yes, please. Um, the, uh, the answer was, I'll, I'll no, not that. at all. Um, <laughs> Stiamo negoziando assolutamente. E infatti, il Vice Presidente Pence sta andando in Turchia adesso. E tra qualche giorno ci, stanno, ci andrà anche il Segretario di Stato Pompeo. E stiamo negoziando e staremo a vedere quello che succede. Eh, però, appunto, come eh, ripeto, come ho detto prima, io ho tanto messo in salvo i nostri soldati, tutti e 28, e sono, eh, sono al salvo. Adesso loro, i siriani, i curdi, sono protetti eh, dai russi. Se la Russia si vuole, eh, vuole occuparsi della, della Siria, sono affari loro. Eh, quello, si sono occupati per tanti anni dell'Afghanistan e proprio a causa di quello hanno dovuto subire delle grossissime perdite e per questo che non si chiama più Unione Sovietica ma uh, Russia. E io per quanto riguarda i curdi l'ho detto, eh, sì, sono i curdi, eh, abbiamo la, combattuto bene insieme a loro, al loro fianco, li abbiamo pagati per fare questo, ma va bene, come ho detto prima non sono degli angeli, però io mi sono opposto quando mi è stato proposto di combattere insieme ai curdi contro l'Iraq perché non, fa senso, non ha senso dopo tutti gli investimenti, tutto quello che abbiamo fatto, più di 5 miliardi e mezzo che abbiamo speso in Iraq, adesso non voglio assolutamente rigirarmi indietro e eh, combattere contro l'Iraq, che invece è una forza stabile. Eh, quindi, come dicevo prima, se eh, noi eh, siamo assolutamente con, eh, intenti e determinati a continuare i negoziati con la Turchia per evitare a tutti i costi che ci sia la guerra e soprattutto che eh, si esagerbi ancora di più la questione dell'Italia. So I view the situation on the Turkish border with Syria to be for the United States strategically brilliant. 
Our soldiers are out of there. Our soldiers are totally safe. They've got to work it out. Maybe they can do it without fighting. Syria is protecting the Kurds. Uh, that's good. Uh, we are uh, — and by the way, every player hates ISIS. Everybody we're talking about. Syria more than us. Russia more than us. They've done a big number on Russia. And we're over there fighting ISIS, but they're over there fighting ISIS, too. They can handle it. And they should handle it. We can fight our own battles on our own territories. But you have a lot of countries over there that ha hate ISIS as much as we do. In some cases, probably more. So they can take care of ISIS. We have them captured. The United States captured them. Some were released just for effect, to make us look a little bit like, oh, gee, we got to get right back in there. But you have a lot of countries over there that have power and that hate ISIS very much, as much as we do. So I think we're in a very strategically good position. I know the fake news doesn't make it look that way. Uh, but we have uh, — we've removed uh, all of our, as we said, 50 soldiers, but l much less than 50 soldiers. Uh, they're now in a very, uh, very safe location, uh, heading into an even safer location. And we will help negotiate. We have tremendously powerful sanctions. Our country has become economically much more powerful than, frankly, it ever was. We picked up trillions and trillions of dollars in worth. The market was up big yesterday. It's going to be up big today, it looks like. The trade deal with China just having to do with what we've done with the financial services, with banks, with, uh, with the farmers has been incredible, far greater than anyone ever thought. Uh, I agree it hasn't been papered yet, but it's being papered. But in the meantime, as you know, and as we've said many times, uh, China's already started buying. They want to buy. They want to make a deal. They really have to make a deal. Their economy's been hurt very badly by what we've done and by the tariffs that we've charged. And we've taken in tremendous amounts of tariffs. A small portion of them we've given to the farmer, which, farmers, which is more than made up for what they've lost. Go ahead. Yes, no, as I said before, the situation of the United States, from the point of view of the strategic position in the Turkey and Syria, is brilliant. We have put it to the repair of our soldiers, and now it will be i paesi lì sul terreno a, a trovare una soluzione e a combattere. Per quanto riguarda l'ISIS, tutti, tanti, noi non siamo i soli a odiare l'ISIS e a combattere contro l'ISIS, tutti gli altri paesi, la Siria, la Russia, la Turchia, tutti ce l'hanno con l'ISIS e eh, troveranno il modo di continuare a combattere e di risolvere la situazione. Noi abbiamo catturato i terroristi l'ISIS, poi qualcuno li ha rilasciati solamente per Eh, far vedere che il problema di ISIS poteva ritornare, ma ritorno sul fatto a dire che la posizione degli Stati Uniti in quella zona è una posizione strategica eh, eh, brillante. Abbiamo messo a riparo i nostri soldati e, eh, e continuiamo a negoziare imponendo delle sanzioni. Gli Stati Uniti proprio in, per questo è una potenza economica fortissima, mai come prima abbiamo ricevuto tantissimi tagliati di dollari, di rimborso, i mercati azionari vanno bene, adesso andranno ancora meglio se eh, quando firmeremo il raccordo con la Cina, perché la Cina vuole fare il eh, contratto con noi, ha bisogno di questo e hanno già cominciato a comprare. E poi c'è stato appunto l'accordo eh, per i nostri farmers, i nostri agricoltori. Eh, che eh, con, eh, riceveranno una parte di questi eh, benefici. And because of the newfound economic power of the United States, because of the fact that we've made so many trillions, many, many trillions of dollars in worth uh, of the United States, uh, I call it a, the newfound economic power. If uh, my opponent would have won, China would right now be the most powerful nation economically in the world, and right now they're not even close. And if we're smart, they never will get close. Uh, but uh, it depends on who sits in this chair. But uh, the United States has tremendous economic power, far more power than playing around with having a few soldiers shooting, shooting each other at the border. I mean, you have a few soldiers back and forth killing each other at the border. The power we have with sanctions and tariffs is far greater than what we're talking about. With that being said, our military has been completely rebuilt. Much of the equipment's already been delivered. We spent $2.5 trillion rebuilding it over the last three years. 
and our, our military powers at the highest level and our economic powers at the highest level. But I'd always rather use economic power before I use military power because people aren't getting killed with economic power. Okay? Prima che la vostra collega introducesse nuovamente l'argomento che il Presidente Trump ha trattato, il Presidente Trump ha parlato con molta cortesia della questione dei, dei possibili dazi conseguenti alla vicenda dei finanziamenti europei all'Airbus. Io vorrei, è naturalmente un argomento di cui parleremo questa mattina con il Presidente e io mi auguro che sia, che sia possibile, come ritengo, trovare un metodo di confronto collaborativo che eviti una, uno scambio di, di provvedimenti ritorsivi tra le due parti. A me sembra e all'Italia sembra che sia preferibile nello spirito transatlantico incontrarsi per confrontare le posizioni e cercare insieme una soluzione che tenga conto, in cui ciascuna delle due parti tenga conto delle esigenze e delle ragioni dell'altra parte. L'alternativa, quella di imporre dazi che probabilmente chiamerebbero delle reazioni, per poi ripetere questa vicenda tra qualche mese, quando la Commissione Mondiale del Commercio ha adottato provvedimenti riguardanti i finanziamenti sul, per la Boeing, rischia di metterci su una strada che poi renderà comunque indispensabile un punto di incontro e un'intesa, tanto vale cercarla subito e perseguirla subito. And um, uh, before um, the members of the press introduce topics that have already been discussed this morning, um, President Trump was talking about the uh, possible uh, implementation of tariffs uh, on European products following the whole Airbus affair. Uh, of course, that's a topic that we will certainly be discussing this morning, and I do hope that we can come up with a uh, cooperative-based uh, approach uh, and a frank discussion so that we can avoid retaliation between the two parties. Uh, Italy and I myself personally uh, have always felt that it's uh, better to talk things through, uh, to find a common solution, to find uh, some sort of understanding uh, for one another's stances. Uh, because the alternative to that would be uh, tariffs, followed by retaliation, followed by further tariffs. Uh, and we also have to understand that we are waiting for a, a solution of the uh, Boeing affair as well. Uh, so of course, within the spirit of the Atlantic Alliance, within the spirit of the friendship we've always had, uh, I do feel it would be best to uh, uh, discuss these things and understand one another. Well, in theory, there can't be retaliation because this was an award that we got because of the fact that the European Union took advantage of past presidents. And this was an award that we got for the unfair treatment given to the United States by the European Union. So there should be no retaliation. This was getting us even, because $7.5 billion worth of things happened, bad things happened, unfair things happened to the United States by the European Union. So this was just getting us back to even. And nobody else but me would have gotten that $7.5 billion back for the taxpayers of the United States. Beh, non credo che si possa parlare veramente di ritorsioni perché la giudicato dell'OMC nei confronti degli Stati Uniti è stato proprio a seguito di un uh, di un fatto che l'Unione Europea si è preso uh, si è approfittata del di un, un commercio inequo con gli Stati Uniti. Adesso siamo pari e questi 7 miliardi e mezzo che abbiamo avuto nessun altro presidente che sarebbe riuscito ad averli. Are, are you concerned that Bolton could be called to testify in your impeachment inquiry? No, look, John Bolton, I got along well with him. Some people didn't. Some people didn't like John Bolton. I actually got along with him pretty well. Uh, it just didn't work out. I don't know that he got along with Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani was seeking out corruption and what happens mostly in the 2016 election because there was tremendous corruption in the 2016 election. I think even you would admit that. Uh, the election was uh, — it was disgraceful what happened and what happened to me and what happened to the Republicans. And that continues with Nancy Pelosi and with Schiff. Adam Schiff got caught making up statements that he said I said that I didn't say, which is fraud. I mean, it's, pure, it's purely fraudulent. So it continues. 
So Rudy was a great prosecutor. He was the best mayor in the history of the city of New York, as far as I can see. I think he's pretty much acknowledged what he did with her crime and everything else. And when he saw what was going on with our election of 2016, the election I won, but the election that was absolutely corrupted by things that took place in government. Now, we'll see what happens. The IG report's going to come out soon, and uh, we'll see what happens. I think people — I know nothing about it. Uh, in terms of the report, I'm waiting for the report like everybody else. But I predict you will see things that you don't even believe, the level of corruption, uh, whether it's Comey, whether it's uh, Strzok and uh, his lover Page, uh, whether it's so many other people, McCabe, whether it's President Obama himself. Let's see whether or not it's President Obama. Let's see whether or not they put that in. Wait a minute. Let's see whether or not. So Rudy uh, saw that. And I can tell you, Rudy Giuliani, because he was very, very incensed at the uh, horrible things that he saw, as are many people, okay, and many Republicans. And the Republicans have been treated very unfairly by the Democrats. I'll say this. Paul Ryan would never issue a subpoena. I don't say right or wrong. He wouldn't do it. He had too much respect for our country. Nancy Pelosi hands him out like cookies. Everybody I, — I don't even know these people. And for the most part, people like that at test of — I don't even know who they are. I never even heard of some of them, most of them. But I have all these people testifying. And then they leak out. They don't say the good parts. They only say the bad parts. We're not allowed to representation. We're not allowed to lawyers. We're not allowed to have anything. The Democrats are treating the Republicans very, very badly. Fortunately, we have a lot of good, strong, smart Republicans. But they never dealt, John, with the Democrats the way the Democrats deal. And the Republicans won't forget it. Because what they're doing, what the Democrats are doing to this nation is a disgrace. What they have done, the disrespect that they've shown to the presidency, and it'll happen to them. Because if the Republicans have the House, which I think they will, because of impeachment, I think that because of this nonsense uh, impeachment, it's based on a perfect phone conversation, an absolutely perfect phone conversation with the President of Ukraine. A friend of mine who's a top lawyer already said, this is perfect. You didn't say, did you know this was going to happen? I actually thought it was going to happen. There were many people listening to that conversation, because when I speak to a leader, like if I speak to the President of Italy, if I speak to anybody, I know that there are many intelligence people on the line. I know that. I mean, with my understanding and knowledge. I don't know exactly who, but I assume there are many people. Fortunately, they had uh, transcribers, stenographers, people that do this for a living on the line, because we have an exact copy of the report, of the, of the call. So the call was put out immediately when I started hearing about the whistleblower. Well, the whistleblower's report was totally wrong. The whistleblower didn't know what he was talking about, or was given false information, or was even worse than that. Now, all of a sudden, Schiff doesn't want to talk to the whistleblower. Now, all of a sudden, quid pro quo doesn't matter, because now they see in the call there was no quid pro quo. So. With Rudy, Rudy was seeking out corruption. And I think there's nothing wrong with seeking out corruption. But, but, but did Rudy, you have Steve? Rudy registers a foreign lobbyist. I don't know what he did. I, I don't know. That's up to him. That you have to ask. Excuse me. No. You have to ask Rudy those questions. Don't ask me. But Rudy was mo one of many people that was incensed at the corruption that took place during that election. Pure corruption. For instance, I still ask the FBI, where is the server? How come the FBI never got the server from the DNC? Where is the server? I want to see the server. Let's see what's on the server. So the server, they say, is held by a company whose primary ownership individual is from Ukraine. I'd like to see the server. I think it's very important for this country to see the server. Nobody wants to see it. The media never wants to see it, but I'll tell you, Republicans want to see it. So Republicans aren't treated well. And here's the problem. I think we're going to take the House, based on what's happening with the impeachment stuff. And the Republicans can do the same thing in reverse if they ever have it. I hope it's going to be a long time, because nobody's done a better job with the economy, with our military. With our, I've rebuilt the military. Our economy is the best it's ever been. We have numbers that just came out where, not including taxes, the median household income for the average American has increased $5,000 in a very short time since I've been President. Nobody's ever heard of numbers like that. So people want to find out 
Why was it so corrupt during that election? And I want to find out more than anybody else. Steve, go ahead. Yeah, one of the things that has been exposed by the Turkey situation is that as many as 50 nuclear weapons uh, are at Incirlik Air Base in Turkey. How confident are you of those, those weapons' safety? We're, we're confident, and we have a great, uh, a great air base there, a very powerful air base. That air base alone can take any place. It's a large, powerful air base. And, you know, Turkey, just so people remember, Turkey is a NATO member. We're supposed to get along with our NATO members. And Turkey is a NATO member. Do people want us to start shooting at a NATO member? That would be a first. And that's all involved having to do with NATO. Yeah. Mr. President, you're going to be seeing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi today. What, how do you anticipate that? Well, I'd, I'd say this. I think that she's uh, done this country a tremendous disservice. Uh, she's uh, created a phony witch hunt, another one. First one failed. They're all failing. This one is just absolutely crazy. All you have to do is read the transcript of the call. Read the transcript. This is a open and shut, simple case. They're desperate because they know they're going to lose the election. They're desperate to do something because they know they're going to lose the election. This administration has created the strongest economy in the history of our country. We have the greatest stock market. We had over 100 times we broke the record for stock market. People's — if you look at people's stocks, their 401ks, if you look at anything you want to look at, they're far better off now than they probably ever have been in this country. Record stock markets. And don't forget, stock markets not just rich people. It's all people because all people own in the stock markets. New York Stock Exchange, all of them, they're at record highs. Nobody's ever done what we've done. So they're playing games. They figure they can't win the election, so maybe we can find some ground. We'll get somebody that Trump never met, and maybe they'll say something bad about Trump. And if they do really bad, maybe it can stick a little bit. I don't think it's going to work. They've treated the Republican Party with great disrespect. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. My meeting with the family was uh, really uh, — it was beautiful in a certain way. They did not want to meet with the person in question. Uh, but we had a very good meeting. They're very nice people. Uh, and uh, we met with a full group. It was four people, actually, as you — you know how it's all broken up. And the meeting took place right here at about 6 o'clock last night. And uh, it was very sad, to be honest. She lost — and they lost their son. I believe it was going down the wrong way, because that happens in Europe. You go to Europe, and the roads are opposite. And it's very tough. If you're from the United States, you do make that — that decision to make a right turn where you're supposed to make a left turn. The roads are opposite. And she said that's what happened. That happens to a lot of people, by the way. But she said that's what happened. She was in the room right out there. We met right here in these — this area. And I offered to uh, bring the person in question in, and they weren't ready for it. But I did offer. I spoke with uh, Boris. He asked me if I'd do that, and I did it. Uh, unfortunately, they wanted to meet with her, and unfortunately, when we had everybody together, they decided not to meet. Uh, perhaps they had lawyers involved by that time. I don't know exactly. I know the people were lovely, they were very nice, and they were, you know, desperately sad. Sir, did you suggest that the family had indicated at one point that they were interested in meeting with you? I thought they were. Based on what I saw, they wanted to meet. But now they say they only want to meet if they're in the U.K., and uh, that'll be up to them. But I did meet the, uh, the family, and I expressed condolences on behalf of our country. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, wait. There's a great question I'm being asked. This is maybe the greatest question I've been asked in a long time. Please put those mics over here. Go ahead. Say it again. Because you're winning with the WTO because you are growing the biggest economy in the world. Are you willing to give Italy a break on tariffs? We are looking at Italy very strongly. And as you know, the seven and a half is to be uh, divided the way we say. We've divided it up. Italy has got a problem with the way we've divided it up, because they said they had much less to do with it. And Germany had more to do with it, and France had more to do with it, as an example. So we are going to look at that very strongly. 
Ambassador Lighthizer is here. We're going to look at it very strongly. Okay? Thank you. Good question. I love that question. Thank you all very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Steve, please treat them nicely. Treat them nicely. Translator doing the baby job. Translator doing the baby job. I understand that, but they're going to have to. All right, guys.